Okay, the test will begin at 1, as usual, and of course you all know by now, you may leave when it's over. Um, anyway, 1 o'clock, um, and the uh, chapters, unlike what the syllabus says, chapters 18, 19, and 20. All right, um, hopefully all of you have bought green scantrons. How do you, how do you have it? I have a couple extras. Okay. And I hope they all became prepared. I mean, yeah. This yeah. test was announced and it is on the syllabus. Yeah. Like, okay. uh, one of you is looking at me like, you're, oh, you mean, you know, hopefully all of you know there's a test today. Uh, I mean, you know, I announced it, Hulk, and it is on the syllabus, so nobody can complain that it's a pop quiz, whether you want to or not. It's not, it's not a pop test, no. All right, anyway, but today we'll move on to chapter 21. I used to begin this chapter by saying it was my least favorite chapter in a book. Perhaps it still is, but then I've had a lot of time to think about it. The chapter is about imperialism. To, yes? Uh, just big picture, are you going to roll this chapter on to our next test? Yeah, the chapter 21, okay, thank you. Chapter 21 will be on the next test. Yeah. And this um, is all chapter 21 stuff, right? Chapter 21, but for today, uh, it'll be chapters 18, 19, and 20, right. as I announced last week. Right. Right. 18, yeah. 19. But 21, if you worked hard on chapter 21, hey, more power to you. It'll, it'll benefit you later. Um, imperialism has gotten a really, really bad name, and a lot of people are taught to hate Europeans because Europeans were the chief imperialist. But the other side of that is a lot of Europeans' motives was not greed as much as it was to advance the colonial peoples, to civilize them. Well, three C's, commerce, civilization, and Christianity, not necessarily in that order. Some, your book tries to say commerce was number one. Um, Europe, Western Europe was a whole lot more Christian then than it is now. And I would say that Christianity probably had a whole lot to do with it. Uh, after going through two world wars, plus a Great Depression in between, plus a Cold War, Europeans are a lot less Christian than they were 120, 130 years ago. The three products that they wanted to obtain were oil, tin, and rubber. Yes, oil was discovered in the Middle East around 1905, and it had been discovered of other places earlier. An American man had found out that you could drill for oil, and this saved a whole lot of whales. I mean, let's face it, folks, whales could not keep today's airplanes, trains, and millions of automobiles going. There just aren't enough whales in the ocean. So uh, when they found out that there was oil underground, I've got to say this about oil. In 1972, U.S. News and World Report said we have enough oil to last us 50 years, and after that we run out. Well, of those 50 years, 48 of them, 47 of them have gone by. And we have discovered that the earth beneath us is putting out more oil than we're using. And we're not about to run out. And in fact, we've, well, we have a whole lot more oil now than we had then. There's a glut of oil, and it's really hurting, particularly it's hurting Venezuela that depended entirely on oil. But uh, my dad used to make fun of the supposed oil shortage. Turns out he was right his method of determining that there was no oil shortage might have been wrong. It was, to me, it was sheer intuition. Nevertheless, he was right. There was no oil shortage, and there still isn't one. But um, we thought some years ago that we'd run out of oil, and uh, we're not about to. Also, if we really start to run out, Saturn's moon Titan is a whole world that's composed of fuel that we could use. 
if we ever had to, if we can we go to Titan and collect the oil and bring it back in large rocket ships. I mean, that's dreaming still, but it's, it's a possibility. All right, um, now, I mentioned the mercantile system a couple of lectures ago. Mercantilism is where you have a colonies. You have a mother country and a bunch of colonies. The mother countries wanted to get the raw materials from the colonies and then sell the finished product back to the colonies at a profit and um, make sure the colonies traded exclusively with them. And almost every major country grabbed up colonies, I mean every uh, western country. Now the United States also grabbed up colonies as did Japan. All the major nations and the United States and Japan grabbed up colonies. Most of the colonial peoples were Far Easterners from the Far East and Africa. We'll talk about the Far East first. Now, in the Far East, two countries, well, the Eastern countries did not get colonized. They were China to the Ottoman Empire, and both of those countries were on the verge of collapse. Today, the China that we have today is not the China that it was in the 1880s. We'll talk more about that in the next chapter. And as for the Ottoman Empire, it does not exist anymore. The China and the Ottoman Empire are on the verge of collapse. Japan. Now, Japan was the one Asian country that was thriving and prospering, and it grabbed up colonies itself. It did not get colonized, but it became a mother country. All right, now, which countries grabbed up which other ones? Which other one? Here's, now, the paper, folks, there were a whole lot more than this. In fact, in my notes, I have a long list. But I'm going to ask you to remember the ones that were important. Great Britain, India, and Jamaica. Now, we'll talk more about the relationship between Great Britain and India later. Eventually, India rebelled after World War II. Now France, this is very important. In fact, if you had grown up when I did, you'd probably know this. France got Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, or most of Southeast Asia. When, the, when Vietnam revolted and the French couldn't handle them, the United States came in. And that war in Vietnam lasted 12 years and killed a couple of people I went to high school with and wounded a few others. Um, but anyway, France got conquered Southeast Asia. The Dutch, Holland, got Indonesia, or most of Indonesia. Now, Thailand, there were two kings in a row in Thailand who decided they would westernize. Thailand was not conquered. They tried to westernize and Christianize. They made Christianity legal. So they were not conquered. And Thailand became, at that time, the most Christian nation in the Far East. Spain got the Philippines at first. Then the United States took the Philippines from Spain. The United States justified it by saying that we needed to protect the Philippines from China. We actually wound up protecting the Philippines from Japan. Now, it's very important because when World War II broke out, after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, they next went to the Philippines, and they took the Philippines. But it took us three years, but we were able to drive the Filipinos out of Japan, or able to drive, drive the Japanese out of the Philippines. <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah, able to drive the Japanese out of the Philippines. Yeah, okay. But uh, anyway, if the United States now, the United States said that the Filipinos were not ready for independence, but we'd give them their independence. And then July 4th, 1946, after World War II ended, we gave the Philippines their independence. Now, it was not smooth sailing. What my teachers never told me and what our history books never mentioned was when the United States went to the Philippines in 1898, the Filipinos resisted and we went in and with after a very brutal, brutal war, 
reforced the Filipinos under to subjection. So it was not a pretty picture, to say the least. But we did keep our promise to them to give them their independence. All right. Um, these are the main Asian nations and who conquered them. Again, Great Britain and France got involved in a whole lot. The Germany, not so much again, because if you look on the map, Germany is located in the central part of Europe and did not have as much access to the sea as did Britain and France. France has a coastline on the Mediterranean and a coastline on the uh, North Sea, and Great Britain is an island surrounded on all sides by water. So uh, they, uh, they were more involved. Um, Spain and Portugal was to get into the act when it came to Africa, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. What we'll talk about now, Africa. Your book begins the story of the colonization of Africa with France attempting to conquer Egypt. But uh, no, Great Britain said to France, no, and Great Britain moved in with its army. And they stopped the Fran French from conquering Egypt. Well, nevertheless, France had the idea to build the Suez Canal. So, the Suez Canal, folk, if you can see this, joins the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, and it greatly reduces the time it takes to get from Europe to the Far East. A ship starting anywhere in Europe can go through the Suez Canal, and that means you don't have to go around Africa. Now, unlike the Panama Canal, which has locks that raises the ship up above the mountains and then lowers it back down again, the Suez Canal is nothing but a wide, deep ditch. No locks, no raising and lowering. They just simply dug a ditch that joined, uh, joined the Mediterranean Sea <coughs> to the Red Sea. Today, the canal has been made wider and deeper but it still cannot handle the really, really large ships, but it can handle a lot of the world's shipping. And it is still important. Now, of course, today we have more railroads than they had then, and we have airplanes that can get goods faster from one place to another. But the French built the Suez Canal, finished it in 1869. Well, Britain remained involved in Egyptian affairs. The Egyptian government lost some money, ran into money issues. The British helped bail them out. Then an the Egyptian faction revolted. So the British came in and they bought order. What this meant was eventually Britain owned Egypt without actually conquering them. Britain was there to uh, keep the different factions of Egyptians from revolting and they were to bail Egypt out. So. Britain, for all practical purposes, had Egypt, and if you look on some older maps that I looked on when I was a kid, they'll show Egypt as being part of Great Britain. The British had the world's largest empire ever, an empire in which they bragged that the sun never sets. The British Empire included Canada, Jamaica, British Honduras. Now, there is no British Honduras anymore. It's now called Belize. British Guiana in the Western Hemisphere, and also they had Australia and New Zealand, and colonies in North, Northeast Africa, including Egypt and the Sudan. The Sudan became a British protectorate. In other words, Britain said, we did not outright conquer Sudan. They're our protectorate. We're not the mother country, but uh, we keep them under the protection. And this uh, kept the Sudanese somewhat in line. Now. A big problem that European, in fact, Europeans could not live in Africa except for two places, South Africa, where the climate got more moderate, and Kenya. Now, if you know anything about your geography, South Africa is the very bottom of Africa, and their seasons are inverted from ours. In other words, when we're having summer, they're having winter. When we're having spring, they're having autumn. When we're having autumn, they're having spring. Their seasons are inverted from ours. Right now, if you were in South Africa, you might expect to see a light snow shower. And 
And if you were there in December, they'd be having possibly a hot summer. But anyway, malaria kept the Europeans out of Africa, then in quinine. Now I got to looking up quinine because I wonder what did quinine do for a person. It's a steroid. It's not an antibiotic. In those days, doctors knew nothing about antibiotics. But quinine is a steroid that uh, somewhat boosts your body defenses and enables you to help fight off some of these African diseases, especially malaria. So the invention of this, they discovered quinine helped Europeans live in Africa. Now, initially, the Dutch came in and they conquered South Africa, but the British considered South Africa very important, so the British wanted it. The British came in and eventually forced the Dutch, you might say forced the Dutch into the woods, uh, whatever. This war is called the Boer War. The Boers were Dutch. The Boer War was a dirty war and it involved a whole lot of guerrilla warfare. And uh, the British had a difficult time winning. The British, of course, Great Britain was a bigger country than Holland. But the British had a bigger army than the uh, Boers did. And they were eventually able to conquer the Boers and uh, make South Africa into a British colony. All right. David Livingston started out as a missionary, but after a few years as a missionary, only had one convert, so he gave up missionary work and became a, an explorer. And he did a lot to explore Africa. He, uh, he was against the slave trade. He urged Britain to outlaw the slave trade, which Britain finally did. He urged Portugal to outlaw the slave trade, and Portugal was slow about it. Portuguese were the last people, last European country to finally abolish the slave trade. But uh, Dave Livingston preached that it was the European's duty to Christianize and civilize these peoples. And it was served as justification for the conquest of some of these African and Far Eastern peoples. It was discovered after a while that Kenya had a milder climate than much of the rest of Africa, and a lot of Europeans began moving into Kenya. Um, now. <laughs> Oh yeah, something, I mean, you, some, most of you probably have heard of Star Trek. In Africa, there occurred the Great Trek. The Great Trek basically was when the Boers were driven out of South Africa and they moved toward the Northeast. So they got on and walked toward the Northeast part of Africa into what I think is Botswana or one of those places in Africa that was not as good for this living in as South Africa was. But uh, Europeans were, the Dutch that is, were forced to move out while the British moved in. About 1885 or so, Europeans made a mad scramble for African territory. Each European nation assumed if we don't grab up African territory, someone else will. Spain and Portugal got involved. And if you could look on a map of the world around 1900, you would see French West Africa, uh, British East Africa, so on and so forth. And uh, then uh, Angola, yeah, Portugal got Angola. I'm not going to write that down, but Portugal got, got Angola. And uh, Spain got a small country. Interestingly enough, there is one country in Africa called Liberia. Liberia was made of freed American slaves. When slavery became a hot issue in the United States, some people got the idea, hey, let's take these African people and move them back to Africa. So they set up Liberia, country of Liberia. And in Liberia, the stronger Africans built up a plantation system and they sold the weaker Africans as slaves. Basically, they copied what they'd seen in the United States, except the Africans themselves were the slave owners, slaveholders enslaving the weaker Africans.
What made it easy for Europeans to conquer Africa was they had superior firearms. Uganda, Kenya, Rhodesia, South Africa all came under British control. The French took over Algeria. Yeah, well, actually, I should have written that down. France got Algeria. And uh, when I was 13 years old, from a distance, of course, I watched as uh, Algeria revolted against France, and the French eventually were forced to give up Algeria, and all the French people in Algeria had to move out. Again, the conflict was brutal. France got Algeria, and France got most of the Sahara Desert. And again, you see this if you looked at the old maps, the maps I grew up with. They still had French West Africa, uh, you know, the Sahara Desert. What is today, Chad? Now, Italy. Italy tried to conquer Ethiopia, but the British gave Ethiopia some of the best guns in the world, and the Ethiopians defeated the Italians. And this was very embarrassing, especially since Italy was the only European nation that lost to an African nation during that time. Now, we're going to learn in the later chapter that Italy went back to Ethiopia later, and this time Italy came with planes and tanks that Ethiopia didn't have, and they, they conquered Ethiopia. But World War II ended with defeat for Italy, and Italy was forced to give back Ethiopia. Ethiopia remained free, as did Morocco. Um, now, the Berlin Conference. To keep European nations from going to war over Africa, the Berlin Conference was called, in which the European nations divided up Africa among themselves. And the one good thing about the Berlin Conference, it did keep European nations from going to war at this time. They, uh, at the conference, there were no Africans represented. In other words, their opinions did not count. It was all European countries getting together and partitioning up and dividing up Africa, basically giving each nation the land that it had conquered, with Africans themselves having no say-so at it. It did help to establish guidelines that made sure that European nations did not go at each other's throat while trying to grab up parts of Africa. Now, diamonds were discovered in South Africa, and this created, of course, a demand, and if you may know, gold is found in Africa. Africa has is the one continent on earth that has more natural resources than any other continent on the face of the earth. And they have tin, gold, diamonds. They used to have ivory, but today our ivory trade has been outlawed. Besides ivory, it's not needed anymore. Plastics can take the place of ivory. We have polymers that can do what everything that ivory once did. Um, ivory was not just used in jewelry, but used on piano keyboards at one time. There's the old, old piano keyboards might still have some ivory keys on them, even though it's not likely. In South Africa, now this folk was making news, still making news by the time you were born. A white supremacy government was set up in South Africa that was to last until 1990, or almost 100 years. And um, South Africa was the last nation on earth that still had a constitution that was racial. You know, it had a white supremacy constitution that was still in effect until 1990. Uh, um. 
Now, with Africa, the people of Africa seem to prove to be somewhat difficult to civilize, but in the Far East, Europeans taught Asian people fundamental sanitation, hygiene, and as a result, the population of the Far East greatly increased. Eastern nations, couples were still having as many babies as they always had, but at one time a couple might have 10 babies, and maybe two or three of them grow up. Now they were having 10 babies, but eight or nine of them were growing up. Again, owing to improved sanitation and owing to the inv invention of vaccinations. But while I'm on the subject of vaccinations, this morning vaccinations made news. A student in Kentucky was lost his case in court because he refused to be vaccinated. Um, this is a hot issue with some people. I mean, uh, one of my sisters refused to have her children vaccinated. I think she was wrong. We, I have had all my shots. And of course, when I was in the Army, they gave me a whole bunch of shots, including smallpox shot that I already had had when I was six. Um, Anyway, but the vac uh, vaccinations is still somewhat of an issue. All right. In the Far East, a lot of countries developed industrial centers and they became more and more urbanized. In Africa, development was slower. Now, eventually, there was a reaction against colonialism. For one thing, the colonial people represented European presence or any kind of foreign presence. For another, colonies proved to be more expensive to maintain, especially as the ideas of socialism took over. What really finally did colonialism in, I believe, more than anything else, was socialism. Because socialism called for making everyone, including your colonial people, pay them all equally. And this proved to be impossible for European countries. There just wasn't enough wealth to um, go around. Like, for instance, Great Britain could not pay all of its African colonials and Far Eastern colonials equal to what the people of Great Britain were paid. Uh, the wealth was just not there. Um, And uh, that is still a hot issue. We have a lot of people in this country who say that we ought to let everybody in who wants to come with no borders and give them all free health care and free, and free welfare. They believe that our government is a bottomless well of un, an unending, unending supply of money that can be drawn on indefinitely and forever. And. Um, some European countries are finding out as they take in more and more of these people. And see, today what we're doing, we're not colonizing. You know, we're not going there. We're allowing those people to come into our countries. Europe has allowed a lot of these Eastern peoples to come in, South Asian peoples and Middle Eastern peoples to come into their country. And they're finding out that it's breaking them up to try to support them. And these peoples generally do not do anything to try to support themselves. They come in and depend on European welfare to clothe them, feed them, house them, and basically keep them up while they contribute nothing. Folks, now if any of you don't like what I'm saying, hey, I don't like it either. Number one. Number two, your, your input is welcome. If you have any thoughts about it, what I'm talking about is now I'm up, up to 2019. 120, 130 years ago, they dealt with these same issues. Now, sadly, the United States got involved in colonialism in 1898 with the Spanish-American War, and by that time, there was a backlash against it. In other words, the United States thought, well, all you European countries are developing your colonies, so we'll get ours too. So we got a few in the European nations who had themselves had colon point of fact, said, you imperialist, and when I was a child, the Soviet Union would point a finger at us and say, you American imperialist. Uh, they called us imperialists, even though they themselves were imperialists also. Russia had captured Siberia and all those countries inside Siberia, including countries that are today independent. The Stans, Turkestan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and whatever. 
all those countries now, but, but, but Russia had captured them long about this time. So Russia, instead of going to Africa to get their colonies, they got to